welcome to my first review of the 2020 decade, everyone. It is 2020, and I finally found time to get a review out to you guys. And our first review of the year is going to be for Birds of Prey, a.k.a. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Directed by Kathy Yan and stars Margot Robbie reprising her role as Harley Quinn from 2016's Suicide Squad. And also features Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Journey Smollett Bell, Rosie Perez, Ella J. Bosco, Chris Messina, and Ewan McGregor. Hello there. And tells the story of Harley Quinn after apparently breaking up with the Joker, which is basically DC's way of saying Jared Leto was fired. Also, this film is the first R rated film in the DCEU. So, yeah, expect a lot of explicit cursing. But anyways, this film centers on Harley Quinn after splitting up with the Joker, and during her solo living, she finds herself protecting this little girl named Cassandra Ken, who is being hunted down by crime boss Roman Sionis, aka Black Mask. And this is because she apparently stole a valuable diamond from him, and he, of course, wants it back. And while Harley Quinn is with this girl, GCPD officer Renee Montoya tries to build a case against Sionis, Diana Lance is trying to get away from Sionis because she's sort of a minion of his. And there's also Huttress, who's been going around killing guys around Gotham. And eventually, they all come together, and they of course join forces in order to win in the fight against Black Mask and his False Face Society and protect the little girl. Now look, I wasn't really anticipating this movie too much, but I was willing to give it a chance. Mostly because I'm actually one of the few that actually did enjoy Suicide Squad even though I did not like Jared Leto's Joe. And if anyone asks me, one of the best things about that movie was easily Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. She was great. She felt like the original Batman animated series character. She was able to adapt the character from the cartoon to the big screen, and I was really happy to hear that she would be reprising her role in another movie. And that was one of the main reasons I actually did want, at least want to see the movie. We get to see her play Harley again. And now that I saw the movie, I honestly don't really have too many big things to say about it. I can't really say it's a full-on good film, but I also can't really say it's a full-on bad film at all. To me, the film is mostly... Well, it's okay. It's an okay movie, and I'm about to explain why I feel that way right now. First, here's what I liked. First off, of course... Margot Robbie reprising her role as Harley Quinn is amazing. She sounds like the character, she feels like the character, and she honestly just embodies the character to a point where she literally is the character, much like how Robert Downey Jr. was Iron Man in the MCU. She perfectly brings Harley Quinn to life, and every time she's on screen, or even narrating a scene, it's great. It makes me love Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn even more. And I cannot wait to see her in the upcoming James Gunn Suicide Squad sequel. Another thing I loved about this film was Ewan McGregor as Roman Sionis, aka Black Mask. I mean, come on, when we all heard that he was first cast, we all knew that he was going to kill it in the role. And he does. He plays the narcissistic, misogynistic, douchebag, crime lord type villain to perfection. He's really over the top, but it works. And at times, even has scenes where he's so horrible to someone that it makes you very, very uncomfortable. There's one scene, for example, with him and this one woman who was just, who just happened to have been laughing out loud when he got angry about some information that was given to him. And what actually goes down in the scene is very disturb, is very cringingly disturbing. It's, it's not downright stomach turning, like it's not going to make your... Like, I'm not sure if it's something that can make you throw up, but it was definitely a scene that can make you feel really uncomfortable. And yeah, it makes you really hate this character, but that's the point. He's the main villain. He was great, and he was definitely, and it was definitely satisfying when he got his comeuppance in the end. Another thing I gotta give this film a lot of credit for is that it has a ton of really well-edited and well-choreographed action sequences. Since the film is R-rated, we do get some blood at times, but we also get some other kinds of over-the-top takedowns that don't really involve blood. And it's all awesome from beginning to end. And my favorite fight scene in the whole movie 
being this one big scene where Harley Quinn breaks into the Gotham City Police Department and shoots down a ton of officers with dummy, with dummy rounds that are loaded with confetti and red and blue colored smoke. Like, she's not really killing anyone in this scene, but it's still an awesome and fun sequence regardless. Another thing I really like about this film is its soundtrack. It has a pretty dope soundtrack, along with the original score composed by Daniel Pemberton and the songs they used legally in the film. It was a damn good soundtrack. So yeah, for the most part, the film does have a lot of really good things going for it. But it also has certain things about it that are... that make it a bit messy. And this is very much apparent with the title characters themselves, the Birds of Prey, Renee Montoya, Black Canary, and Huntress. And this is because, well, look, while they are played by actresses who do give really good and even great performances, I mean, I actually really loved Rosie Perez as Renee Montoya. She did a good job. But other than that, the film doesn't really do that great of a job at developing them as characters. And this is kind of pretty much the big problem with the whole movie. It's not really a Birds of Prey film, it's a Harley Quinn film that just has the Birds of Prey as side characters. The film does try and develop them, but this film's way of doing so is to have Harley narrate their backgrounds in certain scenes they're in. And it just feels like a cop-out. If anything, it makes you wish that they made two separate movies of this. One about Harley Quinn, and one about the forming of the team of the Birds of Prey. And that's because the film only really focuses mainly on Harley Quinn because, well, she's the main character. And despite the fact that the film is literally called Birds of Prey, the film barely gives us enough reasons to care about all three Birds of Prey members. I mean, we do get some insight into Black Canary as well as Renee Montoya, but that's about it. I mean, heck, Huntress is actually the least well-developed of this entire group. I mean, when we actually do see them agreeing to form a team in the end, called the Birds of Prey, it doesn't really feel that big at all. It's just like, oh cool, they became the Birds of Prey. But we, but the film barely even focuses that much on them because, well, Harley's the main character. I mean, yeah, when they're all together fighting all the False Face Society members, there are some fun interactions, and yeah, it's kind of amusing, but it's not enough to make me buy into it as the forming of a team that could earn them a film centered just on them after, th after this. Again, this film feels like it was supposed to be two movies, and they just decided to cross them over. Like, they really should have just called it Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, which clearly would have made more sense. It wouldn't have fixed the lack of development to the team, but it would have made more sense than making Birds of Prey the full-on title of the film. Look, if they wanted to make a Harley Quinn-centered film and a Birds of Prey movie, they should have made them into two separate movies. One about Harley Quinn after breaking up the Joker, and one about the, about the forming of the Birds of Prey. Again, all the actors do a good job, but they should have been in their own actual film and not be side characters in a Harley Quinn story. Because, again, that would make way more sense. But you get the point. This film should have been two different films. Another issue I kind of have with this movie is that while I did find the humor in the film to be funny for the most part, I also found some jokes that kind of made me cringe a bit. Like, there's this one joke that happens during a chase scene in the first act that involves Harley trying to protect a sandwich she bought while being chased by Renee Montoya and some guy she wronged. And she's trying to make sure that the sandwich doesn't get ruined because it's so delicious. And I, I get it, it's supposed to be overdramatic about something so small, but it just comes off as cringeworthy. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just an idiot that does not understand humor. I mean, I'm a guy that actually found Dabu Ske in The Last Jedi funny. So maybe I'm just stupid myself. Who knows? No. And honestly, those are the only issues I really have with the movie. I mean, come on. Easily the biggest thing that, in a way, does kind of tank the movie, though not in a terrible way, it just kind of tarnishes it, is, again, the fact that it's called Birds of Prey, despite the fact that the Birds of Prey are just reduced to side characters. 
when really it's a Harley Quinn movie. I mean, granted, Harley Quinn is in the title, The Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, but really she should have just been the title character full stop. The movie clearly should have been renamed Harley Quinn and The Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey and Harley Quinn makes it sound like the Birds of Prey are the main characters when they're not. Harley is. Again, it doesn't completely ruin the film. It just tarnishes it slightly as a Birds of Prey movie. But overall, the film is good enough to watch. It had great performances, a good villain, fun action, good music, and overall, it was a fun time. And I can in ways recommend it to those who might want to see it. J just don't expect it to be much of a Birds of Prey film, because that's not really what it is, again. And if that's what you're expecting, you might get disappointed. But surely enough, you'll find it enjoyable at the very least. I'm gonna give Birds of Prey... Er, actually, no, no. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. I'm gonna give Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey a 6 out of 10. For the most part, it's pretty good. It just needed a much more sensical title that didn't try to mis that doesn't try and mislead people. That's all. And okay, I'm done here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go take a nap and try to to relax after getting so much work done on today's review because man, this review took longer than I expected to make. I hope you guys enjoyed this review for what's worth it. Hopefully comments will be on when I turn on when I upload this video. If they're not, screw you YouTube. Thanks a lot for screwing up the YouTube system. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you guys next time and peace out.